This is my new keyboard. Most people do the research and buy a keyboard from a brand and seller they trust, but this would be far too simple, so I bought a keyboard at auction. The listing only had a couple of hours left and the pictures and description were brief and rather vague. It arrived in a black plastic bag with lots and lots of tape, but the box looks to be in pretty good condition and for only £25 this is looking to be a pretty good deal. As far as I can see, all of the original packaging is included. Inside the box I got the keyboard, switch and keycap puller, USB-C cable and three tester switches. No sign of any Bluetooth dongle, but I'm only going to be using this keyboard wired, so it doesn't really matter. The first thing I noticed is that the included red switches were... actually not red at all, and were blue clicky switches instead. Definitely a disappointment, but I'm swapping them out anyway, so it's not a deal breaker. Now, the bad thing with buying something secondhand is that you don't know the history. <laughs> it smells strongly of strawberries. It has a tacky feeling to most of the keycaps, as if something was spilt on it, and sticky orange marks as well. Because of that, I'm going to be giving these keycaps a wash, and once removed we can see the condition of the rest of the board. As you can see, there's a bit of dust on the top plate, but other than that it looks pretty good. There are some missing screws, but this may be because the top plate is used for various different boards. I did have quite a bit of difficulty removing the upper and lower rows of switches from this board, as the base is designed in a way that doesn't leave enough room to fit the arms of the switch puller, meaning that the switch puller would very often slip and damage the switch, which really isn't great if you're planning on using premium switches. Now if you're thinking I surely should have used the included switch puller as that will fit, nope, that doesn't fit either. So I was left fiddling around trying to get the switch puller to fit, or tearing out the switches, which is something you really don't want to be doing. After finally removing all the switches, we can see that the PCB has north facing LEDs, and does support both 3 and 5 pin switches. Next up, I'm going to be modding the stabilizers. You can easily remove these by simply pushing on the little tabs on the far side. As you can see, these are fairly generic white stabilizers, which have already been lubed, but only on the wire, but are not clipped, and haven't had the housings lubed. I was planning to band-aid mod these stabilizers, but as you can see the wire left very little room, so when the tape was added to the stem the wire didn't actually fit through, instead I decided to leave them as they were and re-grease the wire with dielectric grease. When clipping the stabilizers I removed the two extra legs and used a knife to cut away the uneven bottom of the stem, leaving the contact surface flat. As the housings hadn't been lubed, I added a layer of Crytox 205 grade 0 to the stem and housing on the main two points of contact, which will hopefully reduce rattle. Once done, I repeated this process for the other four stabilizers. As you can see, there is some rattle when the stabilizers are mounted, and to help reduce this, I'm going to be adding thin strips of band-aid to wedge the housing more securely. Editor me has to quickly jump in because I never mention the name of this board. It's the Keymove Snowfox DK61, and I'll leave links down below in case any of you want to pick it up. If you want to secure your stabilizers with tape, then please remove the plate, it makes things way easier and neater. I tried for a solid 10 minutes to take off the top plate and get at the PCB, as it was somehow stuck to the plastic frame. But with the power of editing, you guys get to see it come off first time, nice and easy. There is a thin small piece of foam at the bottom of the case which is nice to see, but it is thin and small so I'm going to be adding some more to hopefully improve the sound. After looking more closely at the black plastic frame which was trapping the PCB and top plate, it appears that it is supposed to be screwed to the base. There doesn't seem to be screw threads so it clearly wasn't secured from the factory. I took some tiny little screws and fixed the top black frame to the base which fixed the issue. To give this board some extra weight and to help it feel more premium, I'm going to be doing the penny mod, which is a simple and cost effective way to add some metal to the base of your board. I'm going to use double sided tape to hopefully secure the coins without permanently sticking them to the base of the keyboard. Using double sided tape worked better than I expected, but you don't want any metal coins touching your PCB so I'm going to add a layer of tape over the top of the coins to avoid the PCB getting zapped. If you have a board that comes with a battery, keep the tape at least one centimetre away as it can potentially insulate the battery causing an electrical fire. As I'm using the board wired, I don't need the battery, but I'm going to be leaving it in there for some extra free weight and using a small bit of tape to keep the connector out of the way. 
After the layer of tape, I'm putting back in the foam that came with the board and a couple of extra pieces just to remove all hollowness and to make sure there is no way the PCB can get zapped by the coins. For the PCB, I'm going to be doing the Tempest or tape mod to hopefully make the sound a bit more poppy. I've added about three layers of tape to the back of the PCB and cut holes in the tape to mount the PCB back on the base. It's already quite full of coins, tape and foam, so I'm just hoping it all fits back together. The PCB resting on all that tape and foam does feel quite squishy and no longer rests on the mounts in the case, but it's all roughly about the right height, so I'm going to screw it all back together and hope it all fits. For the switches, I wanted something linear, and having some Acro Rose Reds lying around from a previous build, and being lubed by me a couple of months back, they seemed like a pretty good option. As the switches came in a pack of 45, I needed some extra switches to fill the gaps. Now I could have just bought another pack of Acro Rose Reds, but I also had some Jaywick Yellows lying around, so I threw them on as well, as secondary switches. Remember those nasty sticky keycaps from earlier? After a quick wash, they're as good as new, and I've thrown them on the board so you guys can see what this thing looks like stock. I will be swapping out these stock keycaps as I'm not a huge fan of the symbols on the side showing you the various functions of the board. To me it makes the layout look a little cluttered, even if they are helpful from time to time. But before the build is complete, let me show you guys a quick sound test with the stock keycaps. For the keycaps, I went with the Epo Maker Icebergs. I wanted to stick to a light coloured keycap set, and these being various shades of light blue and white make it a pretty good choice. They are XDA profile and cost £25. Annoyingly, the Snowflake Escape key print was off centre, which once I noticed I couldn't unsee, but luckily there are a variety of different keycaps to choose from. So I went with this cute seal design instead. Some of the function keys were also printed funny, but the pictures on Amazon were also like this, so maybe it's intentional, I'm not really sure. 